What's going on YouTube, Aaron here, and in today's video, we are gonna be talking about the mysterious disappearance of Brandon Swanson. So 19-year-old Brandon Swanson of Marshall, Minnesota went missing shortly after midnight on May 14th, 2008. It is said that he crashed his car into a ditch on his way home after celebrating the end of a spring semester uh, with fellow students from the Minnesota West Community and Technical College in the town of Canby. Uninjured and unsure of his exact location, Brandon got out of his car, called his parents on his cell phone, uh, and began to look around to try to get a description of where he was at. Uh, he told them that he believed he was near the town of Lind and said that he could see lights uh, on the horizon in the distance and that he was going to walk towards those lights. So this is the town Lind, which is where Brandon thought he was at when he was talking to his parents on the phone. Now, I don't know if he thought he saw the town of Marshall on the horizon, if those were the lights he thought he was seeing. Um, but if we go back to that route from Canby to Marshall and look at the town of Lind, it's not even near where he would have been if he actually took one of these three proposed routes home. I mean, it's very much off the normal track that you would go. It really doesn't make sense why he thought he was there, uh, but apparently he did. At that point, his parents went out to try to locate him, uh, and they were unable to find him. While his parents were out looking for Brandon, they actually remained on the phone with him the entire time. And at about the 47 minute mark, uh, his parents remember hearing Brandon say, oh shit, and then it went silent. There's a few rumors that his phone actually cut off at that point, um, but it is later stated by the parents that it just went silent. Uh, and then they ended up actually hanging up to try to call him back thinking that maybe he dropped his phone uh, and he needed to be able to hear it or, or feel it vibrate in, you know, wherever he may have been. Um, so there, there's a little speculation there, but either way, the fact that those are the last two words they heard him say are a little bit creepy. The following morning, his parents reported him missing. However, the police advised them to wait as this was pretty common behavior for kids of his age in that area. That's not where this story ends. And in fact, it's only where things actually become more complicated uh, when his cell phone records show that he had actually been near the town of Porter, which was 25 miles in a completely different direction from where Brandon was believed to be. Now, if you remember, he told his parents that he thought he was near the town of Lind. That cell phone data ended up leading police to discover his car near the town of Taunton. So this is where they actually found Brandon's car, just north of the town of Taunton, which if we zoom back out, would make more sense if he was going from Canby to Marshall to end up somewhere in between, as opposed to being down here in Lind. I was reading in several spots that his, ta his car was found a mile and a half north of the town of Taunton, uh, but if we actually show where I've been given some coordinates of where they found his car, it's saying four miles right here. So I don't know if my mark right here is the exact spot that they found his car, uh, but this is what it looks like on street view. Obviously there's woods that you could get lost in in the distance, but really if he was following one of these major roads in, even this paved road into the town of Taunton, if that was the lights he was seeing, uh, it would be, I feel like, pretty hard to get lost or, or off the path. Uh, it is not known whether or not foul play is involved. However, Brandon is still listed on the FBI's VICAP missing persons page, which is basically a page for people who they believe could be a victim of crime. Uh, his car was found near the Yellow Medicine River, so there's theories that as he was trying to walk towards the town of Taunton, uh, those were probably the, the lights that he was seeing off in the distance, uh, he may have stumbled into the river or tripped and fell, uh, and that's what happened. So, of course, extensive searches were done of that river and nearby bodies of water, uh, but nothing was ever able to be found. Now, the reason foul play is still kind of above everything else when talking about this case for a lot of people, um, it's because of the way they found Brandon's car. Upon discovering his car, they see that all four of the doors are just completely open, uh, which to me is a little bit strange. They also found a glass pipe 
inside Brandon's car. And I'm not sure if they were able to test that to see if there was any tobacco residue or, or marijuana residue. I don't know what that pipe was used for. Uh, but people started to search and go a little bit deeper into who Brandon was. And there's some theories that he was actually caught up in drugs a little bit more than people thought. And that maybe he had a debt that he owed to somebody uh, around the whole drug world. And somebody followed him out into the middle of nowhere. Uh, and then after that, who knows what happened. But, you know, we don't know enough about this kid to really make that guess. Uh, what we can do, though, is go back to that party and, and talk about what some of the people said happened there. It is said that at the party, Brandon was extremely intoxicated at one point. So I don't know if that was earlier on in the night and then he thought he could drive home later on in the night. Um, someone also claimed to have seen him take several shots, like one after another. And so to me, I would imagine he was probably intoxicated to some degree uh, enough to not drive your car by the end of the night. So some people think he was trying to take dirt roads home to avoid police, to avoid getting pulled over, or just to kind of force himself to go slower on his way home. The way they found his car with the doors open, uh, the way he was on his phone with his parents and then just said, oh shit, it, it really, I don't know, it doesn't add up. Now, kind of being involved in drugs aside, if this was just one of those all too common occurrences of people getting behind the wheel after having too much to drink, this could easily be just a situation where he thought he could drive and he clearly couldn't. Um, but his parents said that on the phone, he didn't sound intoxicated at all. So obviously, you know, he could play that off fairly well, I'm sure. Uh, but it is interesting that his dad said he didn't sound like he had anything to drink or he wasn't intoxicated in any way, shape or form. Now, search teams were actually able to do something that I feel like is probably the most logical, which was stage a 47 minute phone call from the, the point where they found his car uh, towards the town, which they think he may have been walking towards uh, and then see maybe where at that point they heard him last before everything went silent. And search dogs were able to get a scent in that direction, actually going into the river. So that may have indicated that Brandon fell into the river, uh, but they did pick the scent back up along the eastern side of the river. Uh, where they lose the scent, however, was just in a field short of an east-west road that leads directly to the town Brandon was orienting towards. Now, if we go from right where, where Brandon's car was found or roughly where it was found, and we go south uh, on this road towards the town of Taunton, uh, this is actually the Yellow Medicine River that they were talking about. Now, I don't know which piece of farmland or which farm uh, in this area is the farm that they were talking about that they were able to pick up a scent in a field. Um, but I would imagine it's it's one of these that's really close to where the river would be. So uh, there's not, you know, there's a lot of farms, but there's not that many that are in this kind of intersection here. There is also, and this is kind of a gruesome one, there's also speculation and theories that Brandon stumbled onto a piece of farmland, the elements, it was like in the 40s that night, he may have been wet, he may have passed out and, or, and passed away, um, or he just was passed out and then potentially was ran over by a piece of farm equipment. Now, I don't know whether or not this next thing is true or not, but apparently the dogs were able to get a scent on a piece of farm equipment uh, on that piece of farm land. So, and after that, actually the farmer was apparently uh, not cooperative in letting them continue to search other parts of his farm. So that's a really weird one. And if all of that is completely true, um, regardless of what happened prior to that, if Brandon did end up in that area, uh, what happened after, it's a, it's a little strange that he wouldn't let them continue to search on his lands. One thing I wanted to look at a little bit closer to kind of try to figure out why or how he would have ended up here north uh, of Taunton is to look at the route from from Canby to Taunton and try to try to find something that sticks out and the immediate thing that sticks out to me is this spot in the road right here where it kind of curves right and so maybe Brandon typically drove this way and then right here uh, the road started to curve down and so maybe he ended up taking uh, this curve a little bit sooner and then ending up north. So it would have looked something a little more like this, right? So obviously these are two different routes here. 
But if this is where his car ended up, maybe he accidentally, you know, he was on the concrete road and then he took a, a slight left, kind of like what you do on the highway. Although he would have had to go from a regular concrete road to a dirt road. And so I don't know it. I don't know if it's worth exploring, but I mean, that is a pretty specific kind of notch in the road. And so maybe he took that even a little bit sooner right here or right after and ended up over here. Uh, who knows? I'm not entirely sure uh, what happened with this case. There are many theories. Uh, I wanted to go through today and look at the different maps and look at the different areas uh, just to show you guys kind of where he was, where he was supposed to be going, where he ended up, and obviously where he thought he was when he was talking to his parents and kind of put it all in and, and help visualize, help you guys visualize uh, the story a bit more. So hopefully I was able to do that. And I'd like to know what you guys think down below. Do you think foul play was involved? What are your thoughts? What do you think happened to Brandon Swanson? I'd love to know. Uh, and if you like this video, definitely don't forget to hit the like button, uh, subscribe and hit the bell notification if you want to see more videos like this. Uh, and I will see you guys in the next video.